democracy will not come today, this year, nor ever through compromise and fear. I have as much right as the other fellow has to stand on my two feet and own the land. I tire so of hearing people say, let things take their course. Tomorrow is another day. I do not need my freedom when I'm dead. I cannot live on tomorrow's bread. Freedom is a strong seed planted in a great need. I live here too. I want freedom just as you. This thought echoes in the hills and valleys of Kulu at a place that is scenic, mysterious, colorful and infinitely exciting for the adventurous. Unexplored, misunderstood and very much misrepresented. Nestled in the forests and high passes of Kulu Valley lies this little hamlet called Malala, which is connected to Kulu by three mountain passes and can be reached by the Parbati Valley, crossing over 3,180 meters of Rashon Pass via Nagar over the 3,600 meters of beautiful Chandarkhani Pass. The easiest way to reach this little Greece, as it is called by outsiders, is Jari, which is just a two-hour drive from Kulu, and is situated at the confluence of the Malana and Manikaran Nala, which join to form the Parvati River. One has to take a treacherous uphill stretch, slow and tedious, which one can take with porters or horses. Chauki, with its ancient Shiv temple, was the last village we crossed, which has practically nothing in common with the village Malana except the surrounding hills and passes. The heart-stopping beauty and greenery around us and the cool gushing waters were invigorating and more than made up for the exhaustion of the steep uphill trek. It took me and my porters six hours flat to just reach the top by foot and horseback. The first noticeable thing here is the abundance of water, perhaps a reason why the original Malanis chose to settle here. Water, which is the essence of life. As we approached Malana, we had wanted to visit every place that we had heard of, witness every ritual we had read about, and experience everything that we were promised about Malana. And we realized, for that to happen, we had to see Malana through its different seasons, right from the snow-clad facade of the winters through the fresh spring and summers. As we entered Malana, we could feel a sense of mystique build within us. 
After all, it's not every day you visit a place that is said to be inhabited by the descendants of Alexander's men. The first impression of the place leaves us convinced of the distinct nature of the village. The houses, the temples and the general architecture of the entire village is unlike what we had seen so far in the state of Himachal Pradesh. The faces of the people decidedly looked different, unlike a Himachali face. Do they look Greek? We are not sure. Mediterranean? Perhaps. But there was no way we could have confirmed or denied these speculations about their origins. The locals would not tell, and the few people we spoke to find the suggestion sacrilegious that they belong to a tribe far flung away from their own country, indeed from their own continent. East region of our country is a land where nature's efforts complement human endeavor to provide a setting or inspiring in its sheer magnificence. It is a land which calls for an open mind, a land of considerable natural beauty. This is a land which is home to the Mikirs. Mikirs constitute an important ethnic group in the hill areas of Assam and Meghalaya. In order to meet them, one needs to leave the township behind, move to the interiors and head for the hilltops. Initially, the Mikirs belong to the Mongoloid group. They have distinct Mongoloid features. It is very difficult to trace the early settlement of Mikirs in the absence of written documents and other evidence like archaeological remains. From their original home in western China, they came down the courses of Brahmaputra and entered India in a wave of migration. In the Mikir society, every village has an administrative authority of its own. Each village is headed by a village headman called Gaubhura, who presides over the traditional village council of Mikirs called Mei. When it comes to the daily routine of a Mikir household, it is the women folk who take care of most of the chores. Young girls of the family manage the task of getting supplies for the kitchen. For carrying water, they use the utensils called khangra. These are made out of locally grown bamboo. A number of khangras of water are required by the family for daily consumption. So the women have to trudge long distances to fetch the heavy load of water needed for the day. The seemingly tough exercise is done with remarkable ease by these women. The job of keeping the daily supply of fresh vegetables is also entrusted on these females.
harvest from the paddy fields also goes through their deft fingers. They separate the husk from the grain manually with a little help from the indigenous tools. Given their dexterity and hard work, even this job is performed in a jiffy. While their elders are busy working, the younger ones make merry with their sporting talent. The most popular game here is Hambi Kapathu. It is played with a bamboo dice called Kaifu Asok, which is made from a specific part of the bamboo the bamboo joint. The players have to try and strike each other's kaifu in turns. The one who gets the most number of hits wins.